All right, good, good evening, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful day. All right, today we are going to continue with our topic on the loci uh, and the helix in particular, but we are going to focus on the square threads. So we are going to look at what are these square threads, right? What are their applications in the world of industry and how are they constructed? So the construction part is the one which we are most interested in because that's how you would get your marks. So let's get straight to it. Right, like I said, it's still local. Basically, we are looking for the locus of a point. By definition, we are also looking at the helix, right, and application of the helix. Right today, like I said, we are looking at the square threads. Now, definition of a square thread. A thread is a uniform helical groove cut inside of a cylindrical workpiece. Some vices and lead screws are equipped with square threads. That is part of the application of it. What is the use of the square threads? The square thread form is a common screw thread form used in high load uh, applications such as lead screws and jack screws. It gets its name from the square cross section of the thread. It is the lowest friction and most efficient thread form, but it is difficult to fabricate. So you see there are positives and negatives, right, with regards to the square thread. Yesterday we looked at the spring, right, in particular, the square spring. So let's get to detail with regards to the construction of a square thread. Always make sure you are practical in terms of your approach with our subjects. You have to do it in order to understand it. Let's focus mostly on the practical aspect of it, that is application uh, with regards to the concept that we are giving you right now. Thank you, enjoy the lesson. Right, this is what we have today. Right, we are for a task given information. Let's pull this up slightly. Right, like that. Right, the profile of a single start, right hand square thread in the starting position, the complete core, right, you'd find that in terms of square threads, you can have what we refer to as multiple starts, right, instead of one helix starting from one specific position, you could have two or three helices, right, which are starting at different positions, but each one formulating or accounting for a certain function in terms of if it is a thread in terms of a thread so you could have three threads okay that are starting at different position we are called those ones multi-start but um, with regards to our syllabus we are going to focus more mainly on on a single start right the specifications direction it's right-handed Right, number of turns, it's one and a half. Right, the moment you get one and a half, you will know that you are talking about 18 divisions, right, just for uh, those one and a half turns. Right, starting at the start position, as you can see, it's starting at the bottom, right? So this is the starting position. Draw to scale one is one, the front view and the top view of the square thread. 
show only cell construction, no hidden detail is required. Again, we are using write a workbook from HSE. Right, let's we need to, to acknowledge that. All right, okay. Now I'm going to draw a line, right? Now, if you check with regards to this, we are given the core diameter, which is diameter 42. We are given the thickness of the section of that thread, which is 24 by 24. So what it means is that if this is going to go right round like that to form a helix, there should also be another 24 this side that we should consider. So if we do that, if we will then say, right, 24, right, plus 42, which is the core diameter, and the other 24, which should come this side. So we have got 24 plus 24. We have got now the distance from here to the added part, which we have here. Right, so I'm going to say like this, we have got another 24. So from here to there, it's 24. From here to there, it's also what? 24. Right, so this 24 plus the 42 plus the 24 would now give you 90. So 90 would now act as our outside diameter, okay? Right, I'm going to draw a faint line here like that measure 45 relatively to the right like that right this 45 is our radius then we stand to the there you go right so then i'm going to draw the half top view like this. Right. Now we are also given the core diameter that is the shaft diameter that is also a cylinder diameter, okay? Right, which is diameter 42, which is radius 21, okay? Now if you measure the distance from here to there, that should give you 24. Perfect, which is 24, all right? So you stand here. and describe a circle like that. Should cross slightly. Right, then define the center line. Just a moment. Sorry about that. Right, okay. So we have got the distance from here to there, that's 24. The distance from here, that's 24, which is basically our section. So naturally, you'd find that it can also be indicated that the square thread is 24 by 24, which is given here. Right, then we take this one down. Take this one down. Like that, okay? Now, what we require is the height from here to there. Right, we know that in thread terms, right, the square section here, right, is basically equal to half the pitch. So half pitch, right, half pitch is equal to, to 24, like that. 
So the complete pitch is equal to 24 times 2, which would give you 48. That is one complete turn, the movement from here back to a similar position like that. But we are told that we need one and a half. So we are going to give half a turn, right, which is 20, 24. So for one and a half turns from here to there, we are going to have 24 plus 48, which would give you 70, 72. So the height from here to there for one and a half turns is 72, okay? But we still need to start another helix here, 24 from the base, okay? 24 from the base so we are also going to end 24 millimeters after the 72 so what you are going to have in total height is 72 plus the 24 which would give you what which would give you 96 okay so we want a height of 96 right from the bottom to the top after you have considered the height of this section, which is 24, okay? So let's measure 96. So that is the height that we require, right? From here to there, plus the 24, which is the, the addition of this height. One helix would start here, the other one should start here, but it cannot end here. It should end also after one and a half turns or after covering a height of 72. So from here to there should give us 72 as well. Right, the next thing that you look for, right? is the issue of the divisions. We know that one and a half tens, right, one and a half tens, you would get uh, one and a half is equal to, to 18 divisions, okay? Right, and these 18 divisions are basically related to 72, okay? Right, in terms of the height. So from here to there, we need 18 divisions. But now, if, if now the height has increased to 96, how many divisions do we require, okay? So you are going to use either simple pro uh, proportion, 96 divided by 72 multiplied by, by 18. Right, you'll get 24 divisions, okay? So 96 in terms of the height, right, is equal to 24 in terms of the divisions, okay? Right, 72 would give you 18 divisions, but 96 would give you 24 divisions. The other option is like we did yesterday, you say 72 divided by 18, you get four divisions. So how many of those four divisions would fit into a height of 24? So it would be 24 divided by Four, which is six, six now plus 18, you would find that you will get 24 divisions. So we want to divide this space into 24 divisions. I'm going to do it at five millimeter intervals.
there you go. Then the last point we connect here like that. Now you can take another set screen, align. Right. So naturally, the divisions should be four millimeters, four millimeters. But because we need this graphic of showing how you are dividing, it has to be shown. Okay. Otherwise, you would measure four millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters, going downwards. Then you can draw now horizontal divisions. Right, okay. So those are the divisions in terms of the height, right? This is our section in terms of the square, right? We are going to define when we do the, the when we show the two helices, right? Okay, first of all, let's define the center line. Right, okay. Now let's define divide this one into into six equal parts, but basically representing 12 divisions as well. Right, it's starting on the left hand side, so that's our point zero. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is half a pitch, okay, but which is also equal to half of the section, okay, with regards to the square thread. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, which is zero. Right, so from here to there, that's a complete pitch. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, that's half a pitch. 
But then when you start at this point, you also need one, two, three, four, five, and what? And six, okay? Right, but this one is just about representing that one, which is the height of the profile as well. So we take the lines, right? Before we do that, we also need to indicate this is point zero. All right, it's starting at the bottom and it's right-handed. Naturally, we should have been able to draw or number in an anti-clockwise direction because it's starting at the bottom. But if you have drawn a symmetrical uh, view like that, we are going to say this is point number one, which should have been here down. Then this is three, this is six, seven, nine, 10 and, and 11 like that, okay? So this is the actual 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, then 5 would be here, but because we drew symmetrically, but let me just extend to this center line and show the symmetry convention. Okay, right. So the other side is basically the same as this one. I haven't completed the top view, okay? But we'll would complete once we are done with, with the constructions. So I'm going to project this one down. Right. So if it is starting at the bottom, right, so I'm going to start, this is point zero, that's one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, Two, three, four, five, and, and six. So from here to there, that's one complete turn. Then this is the half turn. Right. So I'm going to join this. Faintly. Right, okay. So that is our first helix, which is starting at the bottom, but we need another one which would start 24 millimeters, which is six divisions. So the other one would start here. So this is technically point zero again. One, two, three is common, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine is common. 10, 11, 12, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? Right, you connect these points. Three hands. Like that, okay? But once you have done this, right, you can even forget about everything else 
and define that part of the big helix which is going to to the right remember we are looking at right-handed so i'm going to outline this which is going to the right and also outline this which is going to the right so let's start here like that There you go. Like this, right. Then you close the ends, right? Like this, you close this part, you also close this. You do the same this side, you close this part, and this one. Okay, that is your first part. The next one now we need to project for the core, which is the shaft downwards, like that. This is point one and eleven. And point two and ten, point four and eight, and five and seven. Okay, like that. But you start from here as well. From this point, that's zero, one, two, three is common, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You stop there. Then you connect to these points. like that right you also start six divisions after right which is this point so this will be our point zero again but which is six uh our half dish so it's zero one two three is common four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one two three four five and six okay you join these points as well like that some would work some would not work but you need to have the proper in position now once you have done this, right, looking at what we have done, we have defined this, we have defined that, we have defined this and that as well. The next thing that is needed is for you to define the small helix which is on the shaft, okay, or attached to the shaft, right, which is also going to the right. We are going to wave this one, like that, okay. Now, we cannot define this one because it's in between these two lines. But this one is outside, so I'm going to do this like that. Okay. Right. This one is not inside these two lines, so I'm also going to define it like this. All right. Last but not least. This one I cannot, this one I cannot. Then you look at this one. Like that. Okay. Right. There you go. Once you have done that, then you can now outline, right, and connect. The moment this is going to the left, right, what it means is that the shaft is visible 
and the helix is on the other side, so it's hidden, okay? So I'm going to extend this. Right. Right. Then this one also, right? It's going to the to the left. So I would take this one downwards like this. There you go. Right. So what you have now, right? Is the profile with regards to the helices which are going to the right, the helices which are going to the right, and part of the core, which is the shaft. Right, once you've done this, you can also extend this one out because there is nothing that we'll be able to see from here. Then also outside, here we go, like that, okay. Right, you can close the top part. and also close the bottom part, like that. Now, the other thing that you now need to consider, but you have got these elements of the big helix, which is going to the left, but it's not affecting the first one or even the shaft. So you can outline this, like that. And you can also outline this other one. There you go. Now you have got what we refer to as a square thread. Right, you can add a bit of graphics, all right? You can add a bit of graphics by showing the rendering. Right, remember there are no marks for rendering, but it will, for learning purposes, it will highlight Right, the elements of a square thread. But in an exam, don't waste your time doing rendering. It's not important. Right. Remember, at some point, I said I'm, I'm, the top view is not complete. So you look at this edge, you can come here now and outline from here to there. Okay. But right. that is this edge is that edge. So you are, when you are looking from the top, you'll be able to see that edge. But right. on the bottom side, on the left hand side, this should have been hidden detail, but that is a specific edge that you are able to see. But I'm going to render this. But just to give it visual effect. Right, okay. So if I do this, the next one that I need is this one. Right, like that. Then the other one, which you require to show right artistic impression, is this one. There you go. Then last but not least, we need this one as well. Right. So as you can see, right, there is a groove that was created and that groove is in form of a helix okay all right there was a big shot but which was worked upon to create these helical motions right and creating that groove and when we see something like this right in terms of 
right? In terms of threads, we know this is a square thread, okay? Just like I talked about yesterday, one and a half tails, you find that it's either it's face up or face down. So this is face down, this is also face down like that. We don't quite see the section of the, the thread itself. Right, I hope you were able to follow what we, uh, what we did in terms of the first exercise. Right, when we look and we go on to the second exercise, which is here, right, it's basically the same like what we did, except that now we will be looking at, we'll be looking at the left hand in, instead of a right hand. Right, so I'm not going to redraw everything and show the divisions but because the specifications are basically the same you still have got diameter 42 we have got this thread profile is 24 by by 24 so what it means that the outside diameter is still diameter 90 okay and the core diameter is still diameter 42 okay so what i'm going to do right so that we don't waste the time I'm going to project like this, project like that. Then from there, find the center. Right. right. Take the measurement, which is measurement, which is twenty-one as our radius, and also do the same here. I'm going to draw that radius 21 and 45. So we're going to take from here, which is our radius, extend it there. There you go. Right, define my center lines. But remember, but the other center line is going to change either here or there, depending on how the, the, the square thread has ended. Let's show the center line here. These are marks. Okay. Right. So now I have got it right. But I can also define the convention for symmetry. I'm going to borrow this since the specifications are the same. The first one, I'm going to draw a complete line like this. But maybe before I do that, let me bring this one down. This one down as well. This one slightly down. Right, okay. Right, and also project this one all the way, right? Just to give you an understanding that I'm borrowing from, from here and also from here. These are same specifications, okay? Right, and the divisions also, I'm not going to measure or divide here, I'm simply going to transfer from here.
So the same divisions which are on the left hand side are the ones which are here as well. Right, okay. Now, I also divide this one into, into six equal parts, which is technically 12, because we are doing a symmetrical Right, so this is my point zero because it's starting here at the bottom. Take this one out slightly. Need to see properly. Right, so it's starting here. Right, so that's point zero. Then that's point one and 11, right? That's point three, that's point six, seven, five and seven, right? Three and nine, right? Then one and 11, right? Zero, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, back to zero. Okay. Right. Project this downwards. Let's always start with the big one. Now that you have done this, the next thing that you need to do, right, you can also define this is point zero. Remember, the labels are not important, only on the top view, okay? Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have got your half pitch, which is equal again to the section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve which is point zero. So from here to there, that's a complete 10, which is our pitch. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, which is another point six, okay, right? Right, so we have got zero, then six, then, let me just write it as zero again, okay, so that it does not confuse you. Right, now let's look at the plotting, all right? So this is zero, this is one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, this is zero, one, two, Three, four, five, six. But this you stop. Remember, from zero to zero, that's a complete chain. Right. Do not make a mistake of continuously go, otherwise, you find yourself lost. Okay. Right. So we are going to connect this. Faintly. Like that. So this is the first helix, right? All the way one and a half chains. Right, the next one should be start from here, which is zero, one, two, three is common, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Then you connect to these ones also. Then you bring it. There you go. Okay. Now, the next thing to consider is right the use issue of the hands. It's left handed. So I'm going to look at that part of the helix which is going to to the heli to the left. So from here. Or an upper angle. Thanks. Then the other one. So these are the four helices which are going to to the left. Then, like we did with the first one, you close this part. Like this. The moment you have defined the helices, you close that. This is about the section. That's a section. That's a section. That's a section as well. Now I'm done with the outer helix or helices but the next thing is to bring these ones down in terms of those divisions for the quotient The starting position is here, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's one from each ten. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's one and a half. Okay. Right, you connect to this. Right, you connect to this. Right. You start another one, which is here, the red point number six, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, you do the same currently.
There you go. Okay. Right. Remember, we have already defined that which is the helixes which are going to the left. So we are also going to define the smaller helix which is also going to, to the left. So I'm going to outline this. I'm going to outline like that. It's not interfering with the big one. But you see here, I cannot get inside because it's in between the defined part. The same applies with this part. I cannot get inside because it's already defined that area. But here I can come. It's outside. So find this and stop there. But the other one, which is on the opposite side, it's from here. Right. But I cannot outline this because already there is a defined helix. Right. But here I can come and outline like that. Now, once you have done that, you now consider the position of the shaft itself. This is now going to the right, so which means you will be able to see the shaft. So I'm going to extend this like that. Right. This is also going to the right. So from this point, I extend this one downward like that. Right. I can also take this now all the way up. I don't outline here, come back here, and also define this part from here to there. You have done that. You can now close this, the bottom part. Close it. And you close also the top part. Last but not least, all right, is to define that part of the big helix which is not interfering with the shaft. So from here to there, then there's also from here to there. Okay, right. let's not forget the issue of the center lines, which is a critical. There you go. Right. So the center line is now in position. Right. You can, like we did with the first one, give it right. give it a bit of graphical impression. Right. So I'm going to show a bit of rendering here. Remember, there are no marks awarded for this. It's just for artistic impression. Just like that. Then the other one, which is also similar to that, is this point. This one as well. Right, then last but not least is this part. Right, there you go. You now have got the, the square thread, okay? So it's not a difficult concept, right? All what you need to know, right, and do is to make sure that you apply the concept properly, okay? Find out the outside diameter, find out the size of the section with regards to, with regards to the thread itself, Right, 
the section from here to there, that's 24, which should be the same distance from here to there. The outside diameter minus the inside diameter should give you this. Right, the outside diameter minus the inside diameter, right, so should also give you the half pitch, okay? So outside diameter minus inside diameter, like that, should give you half pitch, right, which would also be equal to the section, okay? This is critical to note, right? Outside diameter, which is in this case, it's 90 minus 42. Right, so 90 minus 42 would get 48 divided by two because you need to share, which is the distance from here to there, which is that one. So outside diameter minus inside diameter should give you half pitch. The half pitch is equal from here to there, that's the half pitch. And that half pitch also is equal to the size of the section, okay? But in some cases, they may not give you all the details, but you need to understand and apply the details from a technical point of view. Right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. Right, and hope to see you again on uh, Friday when we meet after the holiday. Right, we are still going to look at another element of the helix, but now we are going to look at the round spring. Remember, we've already talked about the space spring. So when we meet on Friday, we we'll look at the round spring, okay? I hope you enjoyed the lesson and good night.